Hi, this is Steve Pendergrass again for FictionWise.com, and I'm going to be demonstrating the new features that are in our version 1.2 of eReader for iPhone and iPod Touch. This is the third release uh, that we've had in uh, only about 45 days, and we're going to continue uh, making new releases as we add more and more features to our ebook reader. To uh, go into eReader, of course, you tap on its icon to bring up the application. And uh, you go into the bookshelf, which is the list of all the books that are actually on the device. If I select The Last of the Mohicans, we will go into that book. The first new feature you're going to see is that if I just wait for five seconds, aha, the title bar and the toolbar at the bottom have disappeared. So if you don't use the title bar or the toolbar for five seconds, uh, they go away. And uh, this uh, frees up room on the screen for more text. So you can fit uh, two or three more lines of text, depending on what font size you're using, on the screen. So you have uh, maximum screen real estate. To bring the toolbars back, if you need to use them, um, if you're in tap to turn page mode, you would swipe, and if you're in swipe to turn page mode, you would tap, and those would bring back the toolbars. Here I'm in tap to turn page mode, so I'm going to swipe to bring back the toolbar. Now, one th other thing you'll see is this new page selector bar. And the page number, the current page number, and the maximum page number are now also displayed. Another new feature in 1.2 is the ability to easily return uh, back to where you came from uh, in the case of footnotes and sidebars. So here in The Last of the Mohicans in Chapter 2, I've got a footnote right there. If I tap on the footnote to go read the footnote, uh, I can read it, and then when I want to get back, I bring up the toolbars, and there's a little icon here that is a back button that lets me get back to where I came from. Uh, so simple, but uh, something that we uh, had overlooked in earlier versions. There was no simple, easy way to get back to footnotes, and now we've corrected that. We have a couple of new options in uh, version 1.2. If you bring up the toolbars and go to the options screen, uh, you'll see that we have a couple of new font sizes. We have large-ish, which is somewhere between medium and large, and we have gigantic, uh, which is uh, you know would mostly be used by people who have uh, visual impairments. Uh, the gigantic font, you, you don't get a lot on the screen, but uh, for some people, they were actually requesting larger font sizes. Uh, another new option we've got is uh, just an about box. Uh, we had feedback that people weren't sure what version of e-reader they had on their device. So now if you go and look at the about box, it tells you what the version number is. Minor new feature. Another nice new feature of e-reader 1.2 is unlock hints. Uh, so encrypted books, uh, large publishers require their books to be encrypted. And uh, so if I open a book like Duma Key by Stephen King, and I've never used uh, this particular credit card before on this device to unlock a book, you'll get prompted for an unlock code. But the difference in 1.2 is that we pre-fill in the purchaser name, the name that you used on the credit card when you, when you bought the book, and we also tell you right here in the dialog that it's the credit card ending in uh, whatever. So we give the last four digits of the credit card number to allow you to more easily locate which, uh, which credit card you use. Just saves a little time little frustration. Again, you only need to put in unlock codes one time. Uh, the system remembers uh, the last few hash codes of unlock codes you've used. One uh, final thing I'd like to show you real quick is our uh, battery testing robot. This is the battery bot. Uh, my 13-year-old son, who's in the robotics uh, league, uh, made this for us. And we use this to test uh, how long batteries last uh, on the iPod Touch and the iPhone under different conditions. It takes a long time to run each test, obviously. And so we've only got preliminary results right now for the iPod Touch. Uh, right now, for example, you can expect to get about nine hours of battery life at 33% uh, brightness uh, from your iPod Touch, which is uh, actually more than I expected it to be. Um, so that's pretty good battery life. That means you can do a coast-to-coast -coast flight easily on a single uh, charge. 30% backlight, uh, 30 or 33% backlight is pretty good. Uh, most people find that extremely uh, nice uh, level for indoor reading. Uh, obviously, the higher you turn the backlight, the less battery life you get. If you turn it, crank it all the way up to 100%, you'll still get about four and a half hours, which isn't uh, isn't too shabby. 100% usually isn't needed unless you're in you know full blast sunlight, uh, which most people don't do a lot of reading uh, in full blast sunlight. Um, but anyway, we're going to be rerunning the test for iPhone 3G uh, and seeing also things like uh, what is the 
what is the effect if you have uh, music running in the background, what is the effect if you turn off uh, 3G and wireless features, etc. So we're going to be doing a whole bunch of tests over the coming weeks and uh, publishing results as we get them.